In this video, as we reach the middle of July 2024, I would like to introduce some noteworthy new mods for Skyrim. First, I'd like to introduce the Wabajack list, Apostasy. This mod list offers a modern and action-oriented combat system, customized gameplay, and consistent high-resolution graphic enhancements, providing a completely new Skyrim experience. The visual elements of Apostasy have been meticulously selected and curated and I was truly amazed that there was hardly any performance degradation, especially when visiting Winterhold, modded with the Great City of Winterhold, or Falkreath, transformed by Redbag's mod. There was hardly any stuttering and smooth gameplay was possible. In particular, the lighting under the water, the special shader on the screen when it snows or rains, and the effect of hot water spouting from the ground in volcanic areas were not only for me, but also for all of you sufficient elements to immerse yourself more in Skyrim. Next, I'd like to introduce the Encounter Zone Informer mod in relation to gameplay. This mod is an SKSE plugin that displays a warning alert when entering an Encounter Zone with a minimum level higher than the player's current level. Displayed in a font based on white and red, it can help preserve the player's life by providing a warning of danger in advance. Next up is the Fisticuffs Hand-to-Hand -hand Overhaul. This mod treats unarmed combat as if it were actual weaponry, adding unique mechanics such as directional power attacks, blocking, and bashing. It operates in both third- and first-person perspectives, and is compatible with basic combat, allowing power attacks from forward, left, right, backward, and stationary positions by disabling directional power attacks. Additionally, it enables blocking and bashing with fists, and introduces other special attacks. The mod changes the unarmed combat running animation to the armed weapon running animation. It adds a custom animation for users with fists ready in combat stance to the walking animation. It also introduces mechanics like block breaking kicks, knockdowns, stomps, and drop kicks while sprinting. These mechanics are provided by default, so there's no need for separate unlocking. This mod makes unarmed combat more interesting and diverse. If you want to enjoy a new combat experience in Skyrim, give this mod a try. In this segment, we will introduce mods related to magic, particularly those created by Kitty Tail. First up is the Lightning VFX Edit. This mod enhances the effects of various lightning spells. It seems like a good idea to use this mod in conjunction with the Frost and Fire VFX Edit mods that were previously created. It adds new meshes and particles for lightning spells and improves color gradients, shading, and UV map size adjustments. Experience more beautiful lightning spell effects in the darkness through this mod. You will be able to experience the even more amazing charm of Skyrim's lightning magic. Next up is Wizarding Traversal Magic. This mod offers Skyrim players new magical ways of transportation. The spells can either instantly transport the caster over long distances or temporarily transform them into a black cloud, allowing for swift movement. It's reminiscent of the Black Spirit skills in Black Desert, with the magic's effects, sounds, and functionalities being both useful and fantastic in every aspect. Moreover, the spells use the voice slot, allowing for immediate use without casting motions, which is very convenient. The spellbooks can be obtained from Alteration Magic Merchants once you reach skill level 75. If you have SPID, NPCs over level 18 can also use these abilities in combat, allowing you to experience magical battles in a new dimension. This time, I will introduce some creature mods. First up is the Draugr's new model Dragon Priest. This mod applies the Draugr texture which I introduced in a previous mod, to the Dragon Priest as well. If you're using the Draugr texture, I believe it would be beneficial to use this mod in conjunction with it. Next up is Skeletons SE. This mod redesigns the skeleton models within the game. It doesn't require an ESP file and replaces the skeleton models as seen in the screenshots. The texture of the bones is impressively well rendered, with details such as cracks between the bones areas that look charred, and parts like teeth being quite realistically depicted. 
It's an amazing mod that significantly improves the appearance of skeletons. I highly recommend this mod for anyone looking to enhance their gaming experience. Next up is the Wild Boar Hunter Armor and Mount mod. This mod introduces a new set of armor and mount specifically designed for Wild Boar Hunters. It's not your typical Skyrim Wild Boar, but a high-quality Wild Boar clad in armor. The ivory tusks and mane on its head are particularly impressive. Moreover, this mod also adds armor for the player. The cloak has an SMP effect, the helmet has a very cool horn, and the various accessories are excellent. This mod has been underappreciated more than you might think, but I thought it would be great to introduce it to you. The armor can be crafted at the forge, and the book to summon the mount can be found at the Steedstone, so please keep that in mind. Next up, we have Moonhowl Wolf Mounts. This mod introduces a variety of rideable wolves to the player. You can acquire these wolves through Earhart at Katla's Farm. These wolves offer a unique way to traverse Skyrim, adding another layer of enjoyment to your journey. Each type of wolf has different resistance stats, so choosing between them can be part of the fun. If this sounds appealing to you, I recommend giving it a try. In this segment, we will introduce mods related to animations. First up is the Gun Slicer Animations All-in-One OAR. This mod is a pack configured to use all of Gun Slicer's animation replacers with the Open Animation Replacer. As Gun Slicer's creations were released one by one through Patreon, it was quite cumbersome to download and install each one. However, with this mod, you can now conveniently install them all at once. And it's also possible to selectively install parts through FOMOD. Moreover, since it's set up to operate based on OAR, you can conveniently manage the animations by turning them on and off during the game. There's also a mod called Gun Slicer Animations All-in-One OAR NPCs Patch that applies Gun Slicer animations to female NPCs. It does make them move quite femininely, but it might be a bit awkward if young girls or grandmothers use this motion. It would be better if we could exclude just the grandmothers or young girls. But anyway, if you've always wanted to apply this motion to NPCs, this mod will be good news for you. Next, we're yes. looking at a sound-related yes. mod called Patima Revolt. This mod transforms Patima's voice to be more ghostly, what? demonic, what clear, doing? and you unique. The creator Why made this mod because they felt that Patema's voice sounded too friendly. Someone With Jennifer Tra re-recording the voice, you can now experience a more immersive and enhanced version of Patema's voice. Next up is an interface-related mod called the Dragonborn's Bestiary Add-ons. This mod adds a bestiary of creature information for the creatures or animals added by the creature mods in the Dragonborn's Bestiary, which we introduced in a previous video. There are quite a few add-ons available, so you should be able to find bestiaries dedicated to most of the mods you use here. Thank you for watching today's video, featuring the must-have new Skyrim mods for the third week of July 2024. If you found these mods exciting and helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, and enable notifications to stay updated with our latest uploads. Make sure to grab these fantastic mods to elevate your Skyrim gameplay to new heights. Stay tuned for more awesome content. And until next time, happy modding and happy adventuring.